It's Zarek from Real Chiropractic Dynamics, here again with my friend Oliver over here. Good to have you back on the, on the podcast slash YouTube. And uh, we've been talking a lot about frequencies and vibrations and universal intelligence and ghosts and goblins and witches. And <laughs> as a client of mine once put it, all that new age bullshit. <laughs> Yeah, I had, a, I had a client show up once and he was like, yeah, I went to a chiropractor, but it was very new age. And I was like, what, what do you mean by that? What were they What were they trying to do? I still have no idea. He never told me, he was like, ah, new age bullshit. So <laughs> who knows what it was? <laughs> very well could be. I never asked. I never asked. All right. So Oliver, um, regarding our conversation we should have just recorded the conversation in the kitchen today but you have a, a couple of interests and thoughts that have come up uh, on your mind that you'd, you'd, you'd like to share okay thank you sarak hello everyone um yeah we we're talking about um really the concepts of healing it's kind of following on a little bit from our last conversation which i don't remember everything we said but um we were definitely talking about um intention and also the concept of healing whereas for myself my idea of healing is really it's a movement of from really illusion to truth so meaning um misunderstood to understood uh, cloudy to clear so it's a journey through life so in my interpretation of um, how the body and mind work is that any experience we have that we don't um, grasp perhaps a higher perspective of that experience, we tend to store it in a trauma pattern and a discordance. Um, but it gives us this opportunity to learn from that experience further down the line. So we might have been traumatized, but maybe it will give us the opportunity to learn to forgive a little more or whatever we need to, to, to learn. And the body always keeps the score, as people say. So... Um, you know, we're always going to have the opportunity to grow and advance. So I'm really interested in that. And for me, I've been very interested in the kind of mind element in chiropractic, what we could call innate to innate communication. Um, and I've been learning about that quite deeply since, or exploring it deeply, should I say, since about 2009, I did this seminar, which was very much about using specifically intention. Um, so you're muscle testing to ask about what's going on with someone's liver or an emotion or whatever you want to think. So how does that even happen? How is that even possible? Well, it's kind of possible by the reality that every single thought we can think is a specific um, code or frequency um, that we are, we are putting out there. And it's a kind of a, a model of mind that our minds are working as um, information or frequency uh, generators and also receivers like a, like a radio like a radio for example so i've played a lot with that with intention and through learning that i've um you know i, I certainly saw quite a few um yeah i don't know what you might call miracles or in interesting things that might just happen randomly but maybe through the power of even just thinking you could guide that process but I've also gone full circle with it in that I don't want to be thinking all the time. So there is a place for thinking, intending, using intention. There's also a place for just being present, clearing your own crap, being able to hold space for someone energetically, then doing the beautiful art of chiropractic adjusting and then allowing whatever, you know, miracles or things need to come along the way naturally. I've... Um... I've explored this a little bit by reading uh, The Science of Getting Rich and learning a little bit about the hermetic principles. And uh, in The Science of Getting Rich, there's a big thing about, okay, there is a, a thinking substance, which is basically like uh, quantum physics. This, this guy was talking about uh, quantum physics. It's, the book's like 180 years old. Yeah. And uh, it's crazy. So he's talking about quantum physics. He calls it the, the thinking sub substance which permeates uh, the whole uh, living universe and that humans are thinking machines and that uh, a thought will produce in the, 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 
the substance, the thing that is imagined by the thought, right? So if you think crap, you're going to attract crap. If you think happiness and service and I want to uh, deliver this service to my patients, you're going to attract that. If you think that your life is hopeless and it's shit and there's no money mm -hmm. and there's no patients out there, then that's what you attract. So I'm familiar with what you're saying in that regard. I don't do it so much with... Uh, analysis like how to do it with uh, with a patient um but i'm open to it you know i'm i'm open to learning about it but we had a very interesting conversation and in how this uh e even like uh, having a, an attitude of gratitude how does that you know impact your life it doesn't seem like much uh but if you're really truly thankful for what you have you will be sent more of what you want whereas if you're just like everything's uh, hopeless and uh, my life is hopeless and my relationship is hopeless and my practice is hopeless that's what you're going to attract because those thoughts uh, have a frequency right yeah absolutely i totally agree um i think jay dispenser often says gratitude you know is the force that brings your um desires uh, to you so it's really it's beyond that paradigm of like well, wait till the universe gives me something good, then I'll, then I'll be thankful. Like, until then, I've got my eye on you, I don't trust you, et cetera, et cetera. So no, we've got to... I want to have a million euros <laughs> in my bank account, and then I'll be happy. Yeah. Until then, no happiness for Right, me. right, exactly. So it's more about aligning to the state. We re it's really connecting our desires to our values, what lights us up, and then allowing the universe to kind of bring that along the way in whichever way it wants to do which may be in the material or the experiential or whatever. Um, and so totally I agree, we are thinking machines, absolutely. Um, are we thinking confused thoughts or are, are we thinking um, wholesome, understood thoughts? And that goes back to what I was just saying about the movement of illusion to truth. And we were having this conversation earlier, um, a nice expression of this or metaphor, which certainly personally I really resonate with, was... Um, the Japanese man uh, Imoto, and I, unfortunately I, I should have researched his first name because I forgot it. Um, but he, he studied yeah, water crystals. Yeah, something like that. Kawasaki. Kawasaki or something like that. Um, anyway, he, he, he uh, was interested in freezing water and then taking photos of the crystals. So just like you have a snowflake is a... a strange hobby. Strange hobby, but, you know, fair play to him. And, um, yeah, anyway, and... Um, what was super interesting, he would write a word on a piece of paper under the tray of water, for example. Then he'd freeze the crystals and he'd see what they would look like. And he would write down um, gratitude. He would write down, I love you. He would write down forgiveness. He would see what the crystals looked like. He would then write down um, the so-called like, negative thoughts like, I hate you, you fool, you idiot, things like that. And what happened was... Um, on the um, you quack, you quack. quack. <laughs> yeah right. Uh, on the it's like we, on the words that were more wholesome and uh, loving, etc. Um, they maintained this beautiful crystalline water structure, uh, an expansive hexagonal beautiful uh, image. However, when he put something like "you fool," all of a sudden that crystal didn't form properly. It didn't have this underpinning kind of um, fractalized information to support a symmetrical, expansive water crystal shape, it was broken down. So my thinking, what that makes me think is that, you know, concepts that are really true, like I love you and things like this are more eternal, whereas things that were are not like I hate you it's really just something we we're, we're also hating part of ourselves when we do that and we're 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 not seeing the higher picture and this is why those um thoughts cannot keep um projecting and c can't you know uh, that kind of thing so this gives me hope hopefully of humanity with some of the insanity I like to think that some of these crazy moments that humans get ourselves into hopefully it's not going to continue forever and it takes a lot of control fear uh domination to keep the lid on the beauty of humanity but they're trying pretty hard at the moment obviously but we're gonna win so <laughs> they're, they're trying pretty hard and that's why we have a socially distanced uh, episode if you're watching on youtube which i recommend because there's some cool uh, locations in this particular video right coming yeah. 
So you're saying that uh, thoughts that we have or things that we say, you know, if I if I say something to you that isn't nice, it's not like it's a physical assault. It's different to if I punch you in the face, right? But it still can affect. But we don't see the effect as being like a, a tangible thing. But what you're saying is with this, if you're saying that to the, the, the ice, or another example that I've heard of is uh, they do it with a plant. So they, they get a plant and they, uh, they the two plants, same environment, same kind of plant. They give them the same amount of water, same nutrients, everything's the same as they can make it. Uh, but with one plant, they, they go over it like, you're a stupid plant, you'll never be a good plant, like you can't grow, like you're useless. And then with the other plant, they go and you're like, oh, nice, nice plant. Oh, you're the best plant ever. You're the strongest plant ever. And the fucking plants grow differently. So it's like, that's things that you say, uh, f- f- things that you uh, are, are thinking. Jim Segafus was big on this. Because he's like, if you're, uh, his thing was, uh, you, you you can continue thinking crappy or you can start being happy. In other words, if you're having crappy thoughts, let's say I'm in my office and I'm having crappy thoughts and oh, the clinic's not going well and how, oh, how am I going to pay the rent this month? And, uh, and then I, I look at the schedule and I'm like, oh, Oliver's coming in today and he always talks to me too much. And, oh, he's hard to adjust. And, uh, <laughs> Oliver's going to get into his car and the, 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 I have a clip of Sigafu saying this and he's like, he gets into his car and uh, something will come into his head and he's like, oh, I have to sort this out today. Like, I'm not going into that crummy office. I don't want to be there. And he's like, this is the energy that you're putting out uh, to your people. Whereas what the science of getting rich is saying is that if you hold very uh, true to the, the thought, the your intention that you want, it's not that uh, if I want to have uh, X amount of money in my bank, that it just shows up, a bag of money is going to show up. But by having that intention, having that goal of I want to serve people or I want to make this amount of money, it's almost as if the wheels get set in motion far away and someone that you don't even know will start to look, oh, I kind of need a chiropractor. Do you know anybody? Or something will happen that you're not conscious of to bring that uh, to you, right? So again, I've experimented and I've thought about this in, in, in that kind of a, a context, but never in like a physiological, like talking to the patient. And one of my catchphrases is, you know, beauty acknowledged is, is love awakened. That is a key uh, for this work, for me anyway. So I just want to share that and we can change location. Whilst we're on the subject of uh, what you're thinking and what you're talking about and what you're projecting the universe to send to you uh this week something strange uh happened i'm just i'm not in practice i'm just adjusting people from my house you know whoever refers and wants to come and uh this woman who's been a patient before uh she she uh comes in and she's like i need to get adjusted i'm having these migraines if i have too long with the migraines I have to go to hospital because I will enter uh, psychosis. This has happened before. She has spent time in an institution, padded walls, kind of like this, to be honest. (laughs) Um, The whole whole shebang. And she's like, I think I'm going to enter psychosis. Like, I need to get adjusted. Good patient education. (laughs) Uh, So I'm like writing. Sometimes I adjust her atlas, usually atlas ASL. Today, I was like, okay, we're going to use the, the knee, chest, upper cervical bench, which I very rarely use. Mm-hmm. But I was like, okay, this is, this is serious. Yeah. So I put her on her side and punch her in the side of the neck and send that atlas home. <laughs> and uh, the migraines went away. She calmed down a bit. She, had a, she went from three hours of sleep per night to eight to ten hours of sleep per night. Good job. I start researching about migraines. I'm thinking about migraines. I'm looking it up in the in the footsteps of Dr. G, the, the, the Gonstead book. I'm like, what do you do if the patient has migraines? And I'm thinking like, okay, how else can I adjust if there's migraines? A couple of days later, patient, no relation to this other patient, they don't know each other, shows up. Oh, uh, this morning, uh, th- I, this is a new patient. I've never met her. Uh, this morning I got up and the room is spinning and I vomited and I can't go to work. And my boss, who is my patient, said, you need to go to the chiropractor. So now we have uh, two in the space of a week. Very and good education. <laughs> when I go home after this, uh, after this video, I'm doing a charla for someone that's complaining of migraines. 
So this week I'm the migraine doctor. I don't know why. Somehow I was projecting it and now they come to me with the migraines. I love it. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think it happens quite a lot, doesn't it? It's kind of, um, it makes me think of the time when, <laughs> this sounds a funny story, uh, when I became a bladder whisperer. So I had like this one month when I was in Aberdeen years ago. And um, it was just really funny. Like, um, so I had about four or five women, I can't remember, but they all came in and uh, other than their general things they were coming in for, they all told me, oh, by the way, I've got really bad cystitis at the moment. And they knew I did this kind of um, muscle testy, connecty thing, which is like the intention work. And anyway, long story short, they all got better within um, a few hours to a day after I, after I adjusted them and uh, did this kind of mind AK type stuff. Um, or which you was... just care about the symptom. <laughs> or you're a symptom doctor. This is it. Exactly. You just care about the symptom. <laughs> exactly. So it's really funny because like, often people will be like, if you talk about symptoms as chiropractor, you're pretty much scum to some people. It's kind of funny. But it's like... I'm really tuning into the informational basis of the subluxation, depending how you want to extrapolate the concept of subluxation. But we're just trying to bring awareness, connection, allowance. You know, obviously their system, their consciousness had the ability to empower the immune system to clear out any minor you know, bacteria or, or yeast or whatever. But for some reason, it wasn't saying yes and saying, let's go to work and heal. And that's the thing. So I think it's that I, I do get I'm somewhere in the middle because I, I also don't like I'm not into just like take this to suppress the symptom or or because assuming your system isn't intelligent enough to fix it itself without taking a certain um, supplement or whatever. So I find actually through our, um, the conversation that innate to innate usually that's enough. Usually when we're stuck, it's because we're holding on when we're, we're not um, allowing that empowerment of our consciousness to deal with something, you know? And, uh, what, but it, what's the lesson? The lesson, um, as in if, the, if it's stuck in the ah, person's yeah. body, what's the lesson? Oh, totally. To what do you need to learn to get past this? Totally. Totally. Exactly. It's exactly. That's it. It's a learning. What do you need to learn? And the fascinating thing also with that is, not being attached to having to understand what you've just learned <laughs> because it's your innate it's your, it's your subconscious it's your deeper self that is working out so we often we don't know all the majesty of the body everything that's going on right now all the millions and billions of inter cellular interactions and chemistry and all this amazing stuff going on it's happening but yes that informational framework which is guiding it so especially with this link to emotions as we're thinking beings humans we have emotions that is huge and of course yeah what is that deeper uh, lesson and trusting that that lesson is coming through as we empower ourselves even if we don't truly you know solidly know what it is but we'll get an inkling like oh now I've empowered myself I actually find I don't want to hang out with that person that used to do my head in and I felt sorry for them i felt i had to have coffee with them when basically they just i don't really want to hang out with them they're not relevant for my consciousness to interact with right now and that's okay so and i think that that is also how i look at um some practices with movement um, and body movement and breath work is receiving that knowledge from the body without being so attached to knowing what it is what often we're too attached to having to know what is it was it is like just chill and let go and stop thinking we're going to fix everything with our monkey mind our conscious mind because that's only what five percent of our mind you know they say so 95 percent is like subconscious so um that is the realm of feeling and allowing and blissful inquiry into what is there so i think a key is like let's stop making what is presenting wrong that'd be point one just say everything is perfectly expressing even if it's perfectly messed up it's it is what it is allow that information through so you can actually understand and learn because the longer we resist and hold on then the more trauma suffering etc we have and that's the same with emotions where it's all the same kind of thing um emotions are meant to flow you know they say energy in motion it's meant to be flowing and it's really the resistance of this flow of emotions that um takes us off, off track 
And that's not necessarily wrong. Sometimes we're meant to go through suffering for some period of time because some experiences are really heavy or they're hard for us to deal with um, until we have a certain level of consciousness. And, you know, some things maybe some of us won't get through in this lifetime. You know, some people go through tough things. And But just I think if we just come from a place of, you know, wellness doesn't come from wrongness. Stop making things wrong. Get on with it. Stop judging people. Uh, witness versus judging. You know, that's another key thing for me when I'm working with myself or the body I want to receive I want to love I want to acknowledge I don't want to make someone wrong for what they're presenting because it's not wrong so let's not like that's how I feel anyway with this whole thing so you know everything's just perfect expressing and you're there to facilitate tune in bring awareness and help someone uh, elevate their their uh, consciousness or healing or whatever you want to call it but if you're facilitating that with um, maybe maybe not even a patient, like let's say it's a friend. So now you see these people that just, they repeat the same. Sh- and we, we're all guilty of it, by the way. I've been guilty of this in the past. I'm not saying that I've, you know, moved past this. But people that maybe they, they're in a shitty relationship and then they end it and then they go for mm-hmm. another person that's exactly the same archetype of the relationship that they just got out of and they have another shitty relationship. Yeah. And it's as if the cycle just continues because they haven't reflected on it. Or maybe you have a patient that um, uh, like gets sick with the same things all the time. Yeah. And it's because they're doing it like to themselves because they have uh, shitty lifestyle habits instead of a shitty relationship. Like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's almost as if they repeat the same things and they never sat and thought to themselves like, OK, what's the what's the lesson here? Why? Why am I doing this to myself? You know? Yeah, it's exactly that. It's like um, that movement from victim to victor to, to to allowing to be being empowered, not not being poor me and making my situation wrong. Just actually taking, you know, the bull by the horns and just uh, you know you know allowing it to to inform you of where you need to go or uh, whatever it is. But we do um, we do get stuck in those loops, and it's very interesting. You know, I mean, it makes me think also, and and how that can express even in the physical. You know, I had a woman who. Um, anyway, she came to me with like uh, pain down her legs, like sciatic type stuff, um, bad disc, uh, chronic pain. She'd been told for years that she had to accept that she's always going to have pain. She had to go to pain clinics to accept she's always going to have pain, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and when what she... a great way to still <laughs> hope for the poor woman. Yeah, it's like <laughs> you're being... always going to have pain. Yeah, and, and it's like in that paradigm, they think they're being more ethical because they're like looking at a hundred people and say, "Well, ninety-five percent of them are going to keep having pain, so let's just be honest yeah. and say, deal with it, take drugs, blah blah blah." You know, usual kind of stuff. Anyway, um, she came to me because obviously she wanted to try to, to to try something else, and um, I listened to her life story, and it was like just a mind-blowing life story and she had all this undigested emotional trauma within her and um you know i mean it was like one of these crazy stories like you know uh, very young and um i think her father died and her mother got together an alcoholic and then she ended up in a children's home and then this was um years ago so in the country she lived it was basically like being in um uh a prison they were allowed out for an hour a day anyway so she went through all this crazy kind of life and she was an amazing woman it's like our practical college <laughs> <laughs> yeah right yeah totally um but the funny thing was just by me honoring it acknowledging it listening connecting then doing an adjustment she had no pain after the first adjustment she was like 95 well i don't 80 percent less pain after a couple of adjustments not really any pain etc um, but she also told me, funny enough, from what you're saying, her first few relationships were very violent. Like she also attracted the drinker, the abuser. Yeah. And by this stage, she'd actually empowered herself to know I'm better than that. I'm not going to do that. See the red flag and be like, I'm yeah, gonna... she had empowered herself not to repeat, repeat that pattern. But I mean, yeah, I've repeated stupid patterns so many times as well. So I know it t- can take a while till the penny drops. But, you know, that's why if we can find it methods to connect to our deeper selves and facilitate empowerment then the pressure of our environment is not going to um, keep taking us off center and we're going to actually get to go where we need to go and that's something that's a passion for me in my life um, I've often found like I've needed those intense moments to connect to 
actually um, make a breakthrough. Uh, if you know, going to Cairo, Europe, being surrounded by passion and love. I mean, for me, just super heart opening and just the love of chiropractic and you know things like that. But often being in that um, environment, maybe away from your everyday, just gives you that um, beautiful, you know, pressure cooker to come out the other side or something. I, I always find going to a seminar like that and you're in a new environment gives me more of a chance to look at my life from from above. It's like I get a bird's eye view and like, okay, what 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 is uh what what can I improve? Like what's going wrong? You know? Um to to tie in there, you, you said about uh facilitating healing with the person and also you talked about uh your environment. So speaking of, of environment, uh we are in a yurt. I didn't know what a yurt was until recently. But uh, Oliver, why are we in a yurt? <laughs> yeah, why are we in a yurt? Um, because uh, this is my yurt and we're at my place. And this is the yurt I just built in the forest. And actually, the reason why that is because um, my journey is taking me along that I'm starting to do healing retreats with sound healing, meditation, breath work. And the yurt actually just gives me extra, apart from I love it, it's beautiful. Um, it also gives extra capacity for when um, people are coming to stay and do the work. So yeah, that's my new project at the moment. This year I'm working on um, starting being a facilitator myself. And I guess it's kind of, I've had that yearning within myself to do, to hold space, to teach certain concepts. Um, and now with my sound healing, I guess it's it's opened another door for me. And I really, um, I really love like, like really love sound healing and breath work and things like this so i want to share that with people and also it means that i get to go on lots of sem you know, host lots of seminars i'm hoping to um collaborate with people when they want if they're if i find it an interesting um you know program uh, then i'd love to host certain people as well or 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 do a fusion between what they're teaching you know maybe it's a technique but then with a bit of sound healing for example well i'm definitely looking forward to you having some seminars up here and some some workshops it's a beautiful uh landscape beautiful environment there's plenty of land and uh, the house is amazing and also oliver uh you have a church um <laughs> yeah so it sounds a bit kind of funny saying you have a church uh, but yeah, the house um, has a church, which is a 12th century place of worship. It's really amazing. It's really um, special energy, and it's amazing for nighttime meditation in the dark. It's really, really, really um, something I really, really love. Um, so yeah, we do have we oh, do I have a church in my church all the time. So yeah, I, I feel you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, everyone should have a church. Um, <laughs> so yeah, no, we feel super blessed that the house has a church. It's really amazing. I mean, the whole spot here is just so perfect. It's um, such a good energy to the place. The energy is like surrounded by trees, and it's just um, so it's a real um, sanctuary, real like uh, back to nature. So you've got that nature element, and then so it's just a really perfect place for kind of transformational healing retreats which yeah. is which is the idea so yeah i'm super um happy and looking forward to to getting them going which we actually have the first one coming up in november 12th to 14th and the program is really um it's a few things it's going to be learning a, a very kind of streamlined uh, method for uh, emotional balancing so think a little bit like NET for example but it's I'm going to teach it in a way that's kind of um, quite accessible for different people depending where where they're at so it's not it's, it's going to be an introduction into that anyway but if you're already a, a chiropractor then you can it's going to be tools you can actually use and work with when you're adjusting people so you're going to have um, a little bit of a, a window into how to engage with emotion and intention, it's really information and not everything is just emotion, it's just uh, awareness. And at the same time, it's gonna be a big experiential weekend. So we're gonna do, I don't know, people who are, some people in our chiropractic community are quite familiar with Jay Dispenser type stuff. So I, I love his, I, lo I love going on his um, retreats, I love his meditations. So I guess I'm wanting to um, go a little bit in that direction. Maybe I'm not gonna be quite as uh, big as Jay Dispenser, but, um, 
I, I love that work. So we, we're going to do a lot of meditation um, but with sound healing. So the, um, the big gongs, for example, they are just super transportative. So for people who struggle, some people struggle with meditation to kind of get there. Um, the gongs tend to really take you there. Like it's actually quite hard for someone to resist letting go and surrendering into I don't know, the cosmos and the deeper mind and this kind of thing. Um, some people can if they're really rigid and stuck in their ego, but I don't think I'll be attracting those people. Um, so <laughs> basically, I don't think I will. <laughs> they would run from this place like Damien from the Omen. <laughs> um, exactly. <laughs> so I, am I right in saying, correct me if I'm wrong, but for, for chiropractors, like why a chiropractor would come uh, to, to this retreat that you're doing uh, in November 12th to 14th. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's to get reconnected and to get a bit of your own healing and let go of some of the shit that we uh, carry with us. And also, as a bonus, you might actually learn something which you're going to do with these emotional techniques that you're going to teach during the day as well. Is exactly. It? Okay, cool. Uh, that was actually a really good synopsis. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Zarek. Um, yeah, it's, it's exactly that. It's going to be a deep dive experiential weekend. We're going to go, um, yeah, quite deep into healing methods. And it's going to be concepts you can definitely use in your everyday with yourself, but actually with your clients as well. Um, so I think it's, uh, yeah, it's a few um, elements to it. And it's all, I think they're all going to come together really nicely. They all really nicely dovetail together, I feel. Um, so yeah, it's going to be powerful. But it's going to be um, fun. And we're in a really, um, you know, kind of sacred area. And um, it's a great, a great space for this kind of work. So yeah, come. Uh, oh, yeah. So my new um, page will be it's Neuro Harmonic Retreats. If you want to check it out. Um, I don't have a web page yet, but I will. But I'll have a Facebook page and you can just contact me. People who know me get in touch. And uh, even if you don't know me and you want to come, get in touch. <laughs> well, I, I really think even if you uh, were just inviting chiropractors up here to stay, it would already be an amazing uh, stay. The environment is crazy. I, I camped here last week and even just being out there uh, in the tent, you can feel like the, the energy of this place. It was amazing. So yeah, a uh, really nice place to stay and reconnect with other chiropractors after all, yeah. after all the shit that we've been through the last year. Yeah. Uh, definitely come and, and check it out and we're going to learn uh, something as well from, uh, from Oliver and then maybe let go of some of the frustrations that you've <laughs> built up over the last two years. Exactly. Yeah. Just get, get in touch if you're interested. If it floats your boat, then yeah, get in touch. And yeah, thanks for doing this presentation right. with me. Cool. I think it's going to be an amazing retreat. I think for sure it won't be the last. This is going to uh, build up. So I think it would be cool to be able to say like, oh, I was at the first one because right. these are going to these are going to build up a lot in years to come. I can I can feel it. So, Oliver, thank you very much yes. and uh, good luck to you. Thank and you uh, really looking forward to the to the retreat. Yeah, nice one. Thank you.